welcome along to today's how to guide and today we're going to be looking at fitting a short shift gear lever and linkage kit using all BMW parts and also replacing a couple of the parts on the gearbox where the linkage system operates. You might be wondering why we're changing the gear shifter linkage mechanism. On the E39 as standard the gear throw is quite long and it can be quite cumbersome so if we go from first down into second you can see that's quite a long throw the gear knob as standard is illuminated this one is the original one that came with a car and is quite well worn as it's very shiny and also the illuminated part of the gear knob at the top has started to bubble underneath so you can't quite see the illumination anymore whilst it's still perfectly usable there's nothing wrong with it it's not split or damaged in any other way it's nice to have new parts and it's one of them little things that just finishes the interior off quite well so first things first in order to fit this kit we're going to need to remove the gear lever shift knob from the car and that's very simple to do and clip it from the trim and pull it up out of the way then inside you'll see the connection unplug that then we'll need to remove the foam trim before you can remove a foam trim after you've unplugged the illumination wire you'll need to pull the gear knob off the shift lever and that might pose some injury to yourself be extra careful when you're doing it and lean well away from the direct line of the gear knob as when it comes off you're likely to crack yourself in first I've removed mine already so you're not going to be able to watch me crack myself in first so now we can remove the foam trim then also we'll need to remove the rubber bellow on top as well and that's simply a case of peeling it away from the transmission tunnel as you can see down there then it will pull off in one go you might need to apply some lubricant a bit of soapy water so it helps it slide up the shaft a bit easier then once that has been removed it's likely to create some dust due to the rubber aging over the years then you can see all the parts that we have access to and that we're going to need to remove so this gear lever will go the plastic collar inside which holds the ball that will be going as well and then at the bottom you can just about make out the shift arm which connects to the gearbox and that's going to be returned as this is what we'll connect our new lever to so to get at the shift arm we need to do it from underneath the car and this can be done with relative ease without removing the exhaust and then you've got relatively easy access to it if you've got quite nimble fingers and longish arms once we've finished removing the gear knob and associated trim parts inside the car we need to get our vehicle up in the air get it as high as safely possible as you need a decent amount of clearance for working if you've got a ramp then that's absolutely brilliant as you can just lift the car up and do everything stood up under it if not support your vehicle by whatever means that you normally use and make sure it's safe because you're going to be crawling under it I'm using my jack stands which I've reviewed in a previous video so if you want to check out that video about their operation and use then you can do then once you're satisfied that your car's safe and it's not going to drop then you can go underneath and we can start removing parts under there once underneath the vehicle you can see where we need to get to just above the prop shaft and if you're only changing the gear shifter for the short shift then it's a relatively straightforward job and it also gives you a good opportunity to examine the prop shaft gibo joint or donut as you may know it as for any splits, tears or damage so if there's any cracking on that then it needs to be replaced immediately as you're likely to suffer a failure then best case scenario it just knocks a bit worst case scenario it disintegrates completely 
Also you can check your gearbox mounts while you're here. Make sure they're all in good condition. These were brand new last year. And if you're replacing the front knuckle on the gearbox for the gear shift, then we're going to have to lower this cradle here so we can get access. But first, we're going to have to remove the spring clip on the side of the selector shifter, which is on the driver's side. If I remove the camera right up there, you might be able to see it. And it's very easy to remove a screwdriver or a pair of pliers and it'll just pop off. Then you can push the selector rod to the side. Then that gives you your access you need to be able to remove the gear lever from the top of the vehicle. Once you remove the spring clip, then you should be able to just slide the selector off. Might need a bit of persuasion with a long screwdriver, but it should just slide off sideways. Then once removed, this is what you're left with. The selector rod and a little yellow washer on the side. So if you remove the little yellow washer, because we're going to be replacing it with a brand new one, or alternatively, the short shift lever may have enough nylon on it already to negate the requirement for using these, as these little yellow washers are just spaces to take up any lateral slack when the gear linkage that may be there. It's also now a good time to examine the top joint on the gearbox. Not sure if you can quite see that. But where the selector rod goes on to the gearbox, there is a little spherical joint and the nylon bushing inside that wears and that can create slack and slop in the linkage. So if your linkage is nice and tight in between torch falling on your head and boop in your nose then there's no need to change it. If there is any slack in that linkage then it's a perfect opportunity to change it as well. Now we're back in the car and to remove the shift lever and nylon bushing you need a screwdriver and you want to turn the nylon bushing approximately a quarter of a turn clockwise as there is a slight indent on the alloy frame and on the plastic bushing there is a corresponding part on it which locks into the alloy frame via a quarter of a turn so if you turn it a quarter of a turn then you should just be able to lift it all out as one unit when you're using your screwdriver to turn the nylon bush there's a little plastic tab on it so if you just use a screwdriver against that then push it round as a quarter of a turn then you need to do then it will lift out like so and that removes the entire unit from the car. So compare the old unit next to the new one. So if you put them side by side you can clearly see where the pivot ball is at the bottom. There is approximately quarter to half an inch longer on the arm for the throw. So lengthening this arm here reduces the amount of stroke on the rest of the lever, therefore shortening your gear shift. If you shorten it too much, then your gearbox will be exceptionally notchy and you'll find that you can change gear faster than synchromesh allows you and that will cause damage. If you don't shorten it enough, then you're stuck at square one with the original gear lever style. So the compromise is using the BMW part from an E60 550i and it's 25117546373. So that will give you the nice short throw. It also is slightly shorter in overall height as well by an inch. And that will allow your gear knob to sit slightly lower down and it'll be a bit more comfortable for you when changing gear and give a gear shift a bit more of a modern feel like the newer BMW range. There is a longer version of the E6 stair shifter 
available which is the same length as the E39 one so if you want to use that you can do but you'll have to find the part number yourself before we fit the new lever system into the car we want to put the plastic collar cup on and that simply slides over the bottom and over the nylon ball apply a blob of white grease then that will allow free movement without any binding or friction as you can see on the old one it moves relatively free still it's because it's been greased at some point in its life and it's also prevented the system wearing and causing slack gear linkages to refit the new nylon collar if you look it's got some little indentations cut out in four corners this allows it to slide over the bottom of a shift arm nice and easy then it simply pops into place with a bit of force springs over and then that is fitted and ready to go back in the vehicle I also said earlier about these little yellow washers if you look at the old shifter compared to the new one you'll see that the new one has the nylon bushing poking out ever so slightly further than the original and that is what these little yellow washers imitated on the old lever so you may or you may not need them when refitting fitting the new lever back into the gas simply the reversal of removal drop it down into the hole press down firmly then using your screwdriver push it round quarter of a turn again or until you feel the locating tabs on the nylon bushing locate into the aluminium housing then that will be the new lever refitted and ready to go once refitted the plastic tabs will snap into place you may need to push them down with your screwdriver to get a positive click on them and the little tab we used to turn the bushing quarter of a turn that will be facing towards the rear of the vehicle and that allows your bushing to be firmly locked in place now make sure that when you get in your lever ready to refit the linkage underneath that it's orientated correctly so it wants to be slightly tilted towards the rear of the car not towards the front of the car like that but it's towards the rear of the car then you can go underneath the car refit the linkage and pop on a little space washer should you need it refit the linkage simply slide it into place and then you will be able to pop your spring clip on the free end of it there's no nylon washers on mine as the new linkage lever didn't require them so I'm just going to pop the spring clip back on in place but it's always handy to check as you may do or may not need them once you get your spring clip back in place make sure that it's fully secured and not going to pop off and then when you're happy with that then we can go back inside of the car and put all the trim back in place before you reinsert the rubber bung of the gear lever give it a coat of WD-40 inside just to lubricate it and help it slide down the gear lever easier as otherwise you'll find it's impossible to do then once it's fully in place the big lip will require to be tucked under the transmission tunnel so the transmission tunnel sits between this ridge and the big lip once you've refitted the rubber just check that you can select all gears that there's no binding or any nastiness from the gear lever system then that is the principal job of the gear shifter done before you fit your new illuminator gear knob you'll notice that the plugs are different on it from September 2001 the E39 went to this style plug 
all vehicles before that in the M5 range had this small little white plug instead. You've got two options here. You can either cut this plug off and leave a little bit of wire and connect it to this. Or alternatively, you can cut this off, then use crimp connectors to connect it instead. I'm going to use a crimp connectors option, and that means crimping on this and on the vehicle as well as I can sell this gear knob to somebody else who wants one and if I cut the wiring plug off it then it devalues it a little bit. Once you've connected your wires for the illumination then just rest the gear knob on the lever then you can check that it all works that's illuminating very nicely so once you're happy with that then you can tidy up the wiring feed it back under the foam so it comes up the side of the gear lever then you can push the gear lever firmly home ensuring that you don't trap any of the wiring and pop a bit of tape around the connections to make sure that they don't vibrate loose through use of a gear shifter once you've tidied up your wiring give it a coil around the lever itself, then turn the shift boot inside out as far as it will go, then this will allow you to slide the gear knob firmly home onto the lever and give it a good hard tap at the top, then that is the gear lever firmly home, clipping the plastic surround on the bottom of the lever gator into your trim make sure it's all clipped in and pushed home firmly then that is your brand new illuminated six speed gear knob fitted into your E39 M5 if you're going to be changing this part of the linkage on the gearbox nose it's item 7580281 and it's universal for pretty much all manual BMWs that have been produced in the last 25 years then you need to remove this big spring clip off the one on the gearbox which will allow you to push out the little cotter pin then this will slide off then you can refit your new one by firmly pushing it home sliding in the cotter pin then pushing the massive spring clip over the top of the cotter pin in place it will take a bit of force to get it home as if it's a foam pad inside which takes out any vibration and damping and stops any unwanted movement or noise and if your knuckle has got cracked plastic inside that's why you need to change it so it's not a difficult part of the job it takes about another 10-15 minutes further and you might swear a lot trying to get this big, big spring clip off as well. So thank you for watching and I hope you found this video informative and helpful. If there's anything which you wish to see in the future, please let me know. Then I'll try my best to do a video guide on how to do it. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Subscribe to my channel for other videos. And give this one a like. Then... All being well, we'll see you again in the future at some point. Thank you.